we're doing a bifurcation analysis of this one parameter family of ordinary differential equations, first order, meaning at most a first derivative, not a second derivative or a third derivative. And we've got a right-hand side function that not only involves the dependent variable y, but also involves a parameter mu. What is mu? Well, when you think about this differential equation as a single equation, you think of it as a constant. But the most interesting thing to think about is what happens as that constant changes, which sounds oxymoronic, but uh, that's what we do. We can think about different values of that constant and what happens and how it affects the equation and how it affects the solutions. And the quickest way to think about it is with phase lines. By drawing the right-hand side function, its graph as a function of y and using that to help you think about what the phase lines will look like. It's a quadratic in y, so the graph of this function of y is a parabola. The coefficient of y squared is negative, so it's an upside down parabola like this. 5y is the slope at y equals zero, but that's not a big deal. What does mu do? Mu is the y-intercept. So as mu changes, that graph is going to shift up or down. It's going to be a vertical translation. You can think about all that without thinking about differential equations. You can just be thinking about the graph of this. The point of the graph is to help you, though, to think about the differential equation, to help you draw phase lines. So let me go ahead and first draw the graph of this function for different values of mu. And I, I'm not even going to specify what mu is. If mu is sufficiently negative, how negative? I don't know exactly. Negative 20 is probably good enough. Maybe negative 10 is good enough. The graph's going to be an upside down parabola that's completely below the horizontal axis. Something like this. Again, it's upside down because coefficient of y squared is negative. I do know the slope right there is going to be five because it's the coefficient of y. And mu is going to be the Y, uh, the vertical axis intercept. I shouldn't call it a y-intercept there. So this is when mu is sufficiently negative. How about if mu is zero? What would the graph look like if mu were zero? If mu were zero, it would be a graph that would be up here. You, your horizontal intercept here would be at y equals zero. You go through the origin. So there's some negative value where the graph just touches the horizontal axis, that va whatever value of mu makes that happen is going to be the bifurcation value. Because that's where in the phase line, you're going to go from having no equilibrium points to one equilibrium point. Because the intercepts in this graph correspond to equilibrium points in the phase line because they're where the right-hand side function equals zero. So here mu would be negative, but exactly what negative number that is, we don't know yet. Mu equals, say, mu star. Star means it's a special number. That's the bifurcation value, whatever it is. We have to figure it out with the quadratic formula in the end. That's the bifurcation value. And then when mu is sufficiently large, well, when mu is zero, you're right here. If mu is positive, you're up here. This is when mu is positive. You'd be up here. When mu is zero, I could go ahead and draw that as well. We're past the bifurcation value when mu is zero, but I'll go ahead and draw it anyway. The bifurcation value is going to be some negative number. What do the phase lines look like? I draw them vertically, but I purposely draw a horizontal axis here as I do in the lectures. What should I label this with? How about mu? Yeah, that's what I do in the lectures. I'll call this a y-axis. I'm doing something different than I did last week. I'm drawing an actual plane here labeled with mu and y because I'm ultimately trying to make a bifurcation diagram, which is a little bit more than just finding phase lines, more than what I told you to do. If mu is sufficiently negative, if we're in this case, then the phase line is going to be just a bunch of arrows pointing down because the value of f is negative. 
Why does that mean we make arrows pointing down? Because it means if we drew a slope field and solutions in a slope field, dy dt for those solutions would be negative, no matter what y is. Solutions would have negative slopes, no matter what spot you're in in the slope field. They'd be decreasing. The y values are going downwards. Did I draw the slope field? No, I haven't drawn the slope field. I'm imagining it in my head. I'm imagining a slope field with a bunch of negative slopes and solutions that decrease. And because of that, that's why I draw point downward pointing arrows. At mu equals mu star, whatever that is, we haven't found it yet. This graph has one y-intercept, it's the horizontal y-axis, at a positive value of y. So the equilibrium point here is going to be at some positive value of y, but mu is negative. The graph is zero at that value of y, so that point is an equilibrium point. These correspond to each other. Yes, this one's horizontal, this one's vertical, but don't let that bother you. It's just a way of visualizing things. Other values of y give you negative values for the right-hand side function. Therefore, other initial conditions, the solutions have negative slopes. They're going to be decreasing. Still, you have downward pointing arrows. And it's a node when it's the arrows are pointing in the same direction on either side of the equilibrium point. Now, there are some subtleties that the phase line hides. One subtlety it hides is that if your initial condition is up here, the solution is going to decrease toward the equilibrium point asymptotically, approach it as t goes to infinity, but never reach it, technically speaking. Corresponds to a horizontal asymptote if you drew the slope field. If your initial condition is down here, you're going to go away from the equilibrium point faster and faster, actually. It's exponential decay or exponential growth, so to speak, negatively away from the equilibrium solution. So there's some subtleties that the phase line doesn't show. When mu is zero or positive, we're in this regime where there's two equilibrium points. I'm not, okay, when mu is zero, one of the equilibrium points is zero. So this zero right there corresponds to this zero right there, that equilibrium point. There's another zero of the F function that's positive, corresponds to a point up here. You don't have to draw these extra arrows in what you did, but I'm just doing it to illustrate. When y is sufficiently large here, f is negative. So up here, you're going to have downward pointing arrows. When y is sufficiently negative over here, f is still negative. So you have downward pointing arrows here as well. But in between, well, I guess, okay, I guess I'm focused on this graph. In between here and here, focused on the graph where mu is zero, f is positive. So dy dt for solutions in the slope field is positive. Your solutions increase. You got upward pointing arrows. And now as mu increases further, the graph gets higher, the equilibrium points continue to spread out more. One becomes negative over there. That corresponds to that one. One is a larger positive value. But the nature of the, of the phase line is the same. Down, up, down. So a big change occurs at mu star, where you go from no equilibrium points to briefly one to two. It bifurcates into a fork. And technically speaking, this can be drawn for all values of mu. And so we can also draw the curve of equilibria, if you will, which is a sideways parabola here, effectively saying we can draw any phase line over here at, at any such value of mu and get something, a similar picture is what we're saying when we draw that. How do you actually find the bifurcation value and how you actually find the curve of equilibria? You got to solve for y as a function of mu when you set this equal to zero right? Because that's how you find equilibrium points. You set the right-hand side equal to zero and solve for y. 
And we need the quadratic formula, negative five plus or minus square root of 25 minus four mu over two times negative one is what the quadratic formula gives. The bifurcation value is the value mu that makes the thing under the square root zero because that's where we're gonna go from um, imaginary numbers for equilibrium points to real numbers. Right now, we're not talking about imaginary numbers. So when I say there's imaginary equilibrium points, don't take that too literally. Do you have a question, Noah? Yeah, you're right. Thanks. Plus here, because of two negatives. Thanks. So where is that zero? 25 plus four mu is zero. Means four mu is negative 25. So mu ultimately is negative 25 force. Negative 6.25. Is, is what mu star is. That's the bifurcation valve where the change occurs, okay? This is really the most basic kind of bifurcation problem because it's, it's something you can think about with the quadratic formula. But I do have a lecture you should be watching today or tomorrow where I do a more advanced bifurcation problem that involves a cubic, I believe. And you can't use the quadratic formula there. You've got to think about it in a trickier way. Probably, you know, the quadratic kind is the, could show up on the in-class exam and a more advanced kind could show up on the take-home. 